Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on love. I'm going to try to make it a short one. I've got to finish up the Temple series. And uh, let's see, today is September 7th. Wow. Four more days. It's 9-11 anniversary. Yeah. All right. We're, this is going to be on love. Someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment in the law? In Matthew 22 and verse 36. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So, what is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Uh, I, those of you who have listened to me for a while, you know I've beaten this verse to death, but hey, you should almost memorize this one. Reason being, you got all the Hebrew roots, so-called people, and they will beat you to death about, well, you know, it says keep the Sabbath. Well, you know, let me tell you something. It says, love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If you love the Lord, you don't have to worry about walking a certain distance on the Sabbath day. And, you know, I mean, if you keep the Sabbath, that's, that's a good way to honor the Lord. I mean, I generally try to um, do my Bible studies on the Sabbath and try to avoid shopping and those kind of things but you know that's not uh, if if it's for salvational purposes you, you got it wrong that's all i can tell you but the hebrew roots people they'll uh, they'll try to get you to start keeping all those laws i don't know if you love the lord and love your neighbor and hopefully you don't live next door to a, the, the church of Satan, okay? You know, I mean, come on, let's be real here. If you live next door to a, a church of Satan uh, group, uh, maybe you should find a new place to live. What do you think? All right. And uh, one of the reasons they hate Paul, these Hebrew roots, so-called people, is found in Galatians 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law so next time the hebrew roots people tell you you got to keep the law tell them they need to get the fruit of the spirit because they don't have it nope absolutely not all right let's go to luke chapter 7 i guess we're going to read pretty much the whole chapter Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Now, if memory serves me correctly, a centurion is an officer in the Roman army. He's not just a run-of-the-mill nobody. He's... He's somebody fairly important, at least in Rome's eyes. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom 
he should do this, for he loveth our nation and hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, a centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. He didn't even consider himself worthy to talk to Jesus. I mean, wow. Or that, he, you know, his house, you know, he was even worthy enough to have Christ come to his house. He said, just speak the word. He knew that all Jesus had to do was say the word, and the power of God would heal his servant. I mean, that's some real faith there, people. Let me tell you what. He, for he, uh, in verse 8, he says, For I also am a man set under authority. See, he recognizes that Christ was sent under the authority of God the Father. He recognized that. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. Oh, yeah. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, for many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, forasmuch there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Wow. Raised from the dead, huh? And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Can you imagine the stories that kid probably could tell? Wow, Mom, I was in Abraham's bosom. I got to see Abraham and Moses and Adam and Eve and Samson and, and you know, name all the, you know, King David and Samuel. Yeah. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, that a great prophet has risen up among us, and that God has, hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the uh, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. So, he healed the sick, those with plagues, cast out devils, and gave sight to the blind. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Can we get an amen? And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. 
Uh, I, somebody sent me a meme, or I stole it from fake book. It says, everybody's a Christian until the guillotine's rolled out. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. Ain't that the truth? Will you be offended in Jesus? Will I be offended in Jesus? That's the important question for me. You know, when you're sitting in your nice house and eating a big meal, nice, tasty, big meal, and, you know, it's easy to be a Christian driving around in your new car and fancy clothes and, you know. But what happens when all that's taken away? Think about that. When they get ready to convict you of the crime of being a Christian under Article 1 of the Noahide Laws, right? Oh, yeah. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? Now, what does that mean? Uh, John preached a strong, powerful message. Have you ever heard a, uh, the expression, you know, whichever way the wind blows? You know, like politicians, you know, they'll, whatever issue is popular at the time, that's what they're for. You know, whichever way the wind blows, well, that was like a reed shaken in the wind. But uh, that was not John. John preached straight ahead the truth. He didn't sugarcoat nothing. They didn't like, well, some of the people like John, but uh, the wicked, <laughs> they never like those kind of messages. I mean, John would, John the Baptist would probably have been kicked out of a lot of Baptist churches that bear supposedly his name. So, what went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment, you know, soft clothing? Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled and live delicately are in the king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So that's, uh, that's quite a testimony when Christ says that there's not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. And the, uh, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. That's a quote from Isaiah. Speaking of one that would pave the way for the coming Christ or Messiah. Verse 29. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. See, John preached repentance. So who repented? Uh, the Republicans? I mean, I'm sorry, the publicans. You know, the publicans would have been your uh, tax collectors. And uh, the tax collectors were pretty much told they had a certain area, they had to collect so much money, and anything over and above that they collected, they kept. So they were basically 
it's sort of like uh, the protection racket, uh, protection racket of the mob. You know, the mafia. Hey, uh, yo, uh, you give us $150 this week uh, and your place won't burn to the ground. We'll, we'll give you protection. Ah, uh, that's my terrible New York accent, but uh, yeah, they were sort of kind of the per the protection racket back in the old days. But who who repented and were baptized with and the baptism of John, which was the baptism of repentance? The tax collectors, the IRS agents. But the Pharisees, the Jews, and the lawyers, the doctors of the law, they rejected the counsel of God against themselves, and they wouldn't be baptized. Oh, well, we keep the law. We don't have to repent. Really? Okay, if you say so. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man, Christ, the Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Basically, they're saying, oh, look at this drunken pig who's friends of the evil people. You know, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. All right, so, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees, now a Pharisee is a Jew, not all Jews are Pharisees, but all Pharisees are Jews. And this guy, the Pharisees were very strict about keeping law. They were very strict about it. They kept the letter of the law, but not always the spirit of the law. And you got to remember, some of the Jews were... Uh, had a love for the Lord. Others, it was just a ritual. A, to a lot, some of them, it was just a show. I met a lot of people in church that just went to church as a show. Matter of fact, I knew uh, a black guy, and uh, he was bragging. And I'm, I'm not bashing people because they're black. No. It's just he just happened to be black, but I, I just didn't like his attitude. But he knew all the lingo. Oh, he could throw out those words at you, you know. Oh yeah, I'm saved, and this and that and the other, and he could carry on a conversation. You you knew he'd been to churches, but he was uh, bragging about all the different churches that he'd go to, and he'd. He'd be hitting on the women, and he was like, oh, yeah, them church girls, they are so easy. You just, you know, tell them, uh, throw a few words at them, you know, oh, I'm saved, and praise of Jesus, and all this kind of stuff, and then, you know, then say, oh, I've never met a girl like you, and I, you know, uh, I've been looking for a wife just like you, you know, and he'd, and then after, uh, after not too long, when he either got tired of them or found somebody else or whatever, he'd dump them. And then he'd find another church. And he was laughing about all this. He thought it was hilarious how dumb those church girls were and how easy they were. Um, so, what can I tell you? And if you think I hate black people, let me tell you what. My uh, neighbors are black, and I like them. I help them out. They help me out. Uh, I had a black first sergeant in the army. Uh, he gave me a promotion. Talked to me for five minutes and put me in for an automatic promotion, which I was, uh, yeah, really happy about, you know. I didn't know he was doing that. 
he just talked to me and you know i guess he kind of liked me i don't know i don't know why uh when i had my uh, accident a gal it was a black nurse she uh she uh, held my hand and kept me from her injuring myself because I wanted to get up and get walk. And I was in the middle of the road. And she's like, no, 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 you can't do that. It's, you know, and she blocked uh, traffic with her car. And I was like, wow. So, uh, yeah, you know, and uh, and a and a black cop gave my mother CPR when she had a car accident and almost died. She quit breathing. And uh, he gave her uh, CPR until the uh, paramedics arrived, or whatever they were back then, the ambulance. I don't know if they called them paramedics back then, but uh, maybe they did. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying. I don't hate black people. Sometimes I think we should live separately. I sure wouldn't want to live down in... Uh, Liberty City in Miami, where I saw the riots, but, uh, yeah, what can I tell you? All right, so, enough about me. And one of the Pharisees, verse 36, Luke 7, 36, and one of the Pharisees, a Jew, probably a very pious, law-keeping Jew, desired him, Jesus, desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. So this woman's a sinner. Boy, aren't we all. Well, I can't speak for you guys and gals, but uh, I'll tell you what, I am. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know, would have known who and what manner of woman that is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Now, um, those of you that don't know it, in the Hebrew, and... Uh, Matter of fact, uh, in the Greek translation too, uh, which is Rabboni, but Rabbi means master, and master means Rabbi. You know, they love to, these Hebrew roots people love to point out, well, you know, the Catholic Church calls their people father, the priests, and the Bible says not to call any man your father on the earth, which is true. I'm not arguing that point. But it also says to call no man master, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. I think that's a paraphrase, but it's pretty close to what Jesus said. Rabbi means master. That's what it means. And it says not to call any man rabbi. So what do the Messianic Jews call themselves when they, they got their leader? Rabbi. You know. I guess that's why Jesus said, you know, pull the pull the moat out of your eye so that you can see clearly to pull the beam out of your brother's eye. Yeah. You know, so so when it says master, he's calling him rabbi. Sort of like Gentile and nation. Means the same thing. Same word translated those two different ways. So, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. He's going to tell him a little story here. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. 
The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Do you know what 500 pence is? Pence was, one pence was the day's wage for an average, the average day's wage for an unskilled laborer. So 500 pence is uh, probably two years of salary if you work, you know, five days a week. You know? And the other 50. So one guy owes two years and the other guy owes basically two months. Okay? 500 or 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. So... Jesus says, I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Good lesson, huh? And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. And when those Hebrew root snakes, and they are, they're snakes, tell you, oh, well, Paul's a false apostle because he changed the law. No, he didn't. Jesus changed the law. And when they start telling you that Yeshua stuff, well, maybe their Yeshua is not Jesus. I don't know. Well, I kind of do know, but how about John 13, 34? Jesus said a new commandment a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Huh. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is, uh, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. First John 4, 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. It was Jesus that changed the law. Remember the two commandments? And they'll argue and complain, and, oh, Paul changed the law, and Paul's a false apostle, and blah, 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 blah. Anything to get you away from Christ. And they'll even tell you the you know what, when you when you narrow it down, they will even deny that the New Testament was written in Greek, and they will deny they'll end up denying the New Testament. I mean, let's face it, when you get rid of Paul, I mean you you just basically almost thrown out almost the whole New Testament. And being that it was Gabriel that gave Jesus his name, they're basically denying the entire New Testament. These Hebrew roots people are 
when you when you go deep dig deeping uh, dig deep into what they really believe, guess what you're going to find there? A rabbi. And Jesus said not to call any man a rabbi, your master. And you're going to find somebody that believes Kabbalah. That's what you're going to find. If you dig deep enough. But, uh, yeah. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Christ changed the law, not Paul. Sorry. No, I'm not. In 1 John 4.19, we love him because he first loved us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to end this with this uh, John 15 and verse 13. Well, maybe not. John 15, 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus told him, And ye are my friends. Christ laid down his life for his friends. Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. Yeah, does that sound like a false apostle to you? Huh? You know why Hebrew Roots people want you to keep all them laws? Because they don't know Christ. They don't know him. All they know is laws. And like I say, you go back far enough and you're going to find a rabbi teaching them. Remember, the Bible says if you're led of the Spirit, there is no law. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the, prof the law and the prophets. Huh, what do you think of that, Mr. Hebrew Roots? Sounds like a rotten tree to me. Revelation 13, 19. I'm going to read a few of these, and then we'll close this out. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. That means getting spanked, and I'm an expert on that. I mean, I'm an expert on being spanked. Oh, yeah. He must love me to death. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Hmm. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is sometimes I have trouble believing that, but it's there. I know I'm supposed to believe it. 1 Corinthians 16.22 Tell this to the Hebrew roots getting their stuff from a rabbi. If any man love not, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, cursed. Let him be anathema, maranatha. Let him be cursed. If you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cursed. Oh, yeah. Here's a good one. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Oh, yeah. And then we're warned not to let any man take your crown. Very important, right? 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. Oh, here's one of those other uh, things that false apostle Paul, they'll tell you, hath written. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, 
nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Yeah, and they want you to tell you that this doesn't belong, that doesn't belong in the Bible. Really? Here is, uh, now Jesus was speaking to Simon Peter, but it could be possibly applied to pastors, ministers, Bible teachers. John 21 and verse 16. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of jo Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And you can read verse 15 where, you know, he basically said the same thing. He said, Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Oh, yeah. So... And then in verse 17, he says it again. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. So there you have it. Um, I was, I'm an administrator of a uh, 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 Revelation Scriptures uh, Facebook. We get a lot of Hebrew roots on there. Oh, it's horrible. I didn't know that uh, my salvation was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and keep the Sabbath. Seriously. So, I've been spending time uh, posting stuff. Boy, these people are, they're, they're a plague. Really, they're a plague. You know, there's nothing wrong with keeping the Sabbath. But, you know, just don't tell people that, that they got to keep the Sabbath if they want to be saved. I mean, come on, people. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. That's all the law and the prophets. So, what can I tell you? All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. And, uh, yeah, i got to finish up the, um, the Temple series. I just wanted to do this real quick because, yeah, 30, 38 minutes is real quick, right? Because... Uh, I want uh, everybody to be able to uh, have the ammunition that they might need if they run into Hebrew Roots people. And I'm going to do uh, the next Bible study. I think I'm going to do the uh, Who Named Jesus Jesus. Yeah. Because basically, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, the name. Uh, actually, Yeshua is actually... Uh, my opinion, it's Joshua, which is the sixth book in the Bible, which means salvation. And the Hebrew roots people, they, uh, it's Yeshua, it's Yahashua, it's Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Uh, they can't even figure out how, how to pronounce the name. And they're like, well, if you don't pronounce the name properly, you're not saved. Uh, I don't remember Jesus ever saying, except thou believe on me and pronounce my name properly, thou shalt not be saved, or whatever. I don't know. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to them. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>